So I didn't really have start out with intentions specifically of being an entrepreneur. It was something which just kind of really came about from purpose and came about from really trying to solve the problem that I saw. It wasn't something I wanted to jump into. I was just really in love with the technology and that kind of sort of drove me into the entrepreneurial journey. So I was really kind of driven into entrepreneurship sort of around the problem that we were trying to solve. Uh, I sort of fell in love with the technology of Nextflow and, and, and how it was solving a problem for me personally. I really wanted to really share with the world that solution and really put it into as many people's hands as possible. I saw sort of forming a company, forming Secura Labs was, was really like the, the way to do that. So we decided to create Secura Labs really several years after we'd been working on the open source project. So we'd been working on Nextflow for around three years at the time. We started to get some traction. Pharma companies were reaching out to us, for example, and we kind of saw there was a, an opportunity there. It sort of really led to the creation of Secura Labs in around 2018. Um, I was still working on my PhD. My co-founder was, was still in a, sort of working as an academic researcher. So really fr from that moment on, we decided to really kind of take the leap to, to jump in and, and really it's kind of been an amazing journey since then. So, so Secura Labs was formed by myself and, and my, my co-founder Paolo. Um, really kind of building out from there, it's very difficult, particularly when you're trying to hire as a, as a small startup, particularly in sort of tech space. Uh, engineering talent has been very difficult to, to acquire recently. So it was kind of a difficult sort of uh, mission early on to try, and, to try and achieve that. But very lucky and we were able to hire some, some fantastic engineers and some fantastic people. I think doing it is, is really inspiring them around the solution that you have, around the impact that you're having. I think the open source project for us helped a lot in terms of, in terms of that. And I think sort of from then we're sort of hiring now more of the, the, the management team. It kind of it does make things a little bit easier. You have that traction. Uh, but in, in saying so, you still have to really, really inspire the people uh, with what you're doing and, and, and hopefully that they can kind of come along with you for that journey. So in terms of strategic decision, I think the most important one was really around the business model that we had. We are an open source company, so we have this, this kind of core technology which is used by tens of thousands of scientists around the world. But then monetizing that, um, it's, it's kind of a difficult decision in the, the direction that you want to take that. We decided to create essentially a management platform around the open source software and kind of that decision and, and, and how we decided to, to, to license that um, but also price that uh, was really kind of key early on and that was something that would allow us to really get into some of the very large uh, pharmaceutical accounts that we have and, and really kind of grow our customer base sort of very quickly over those, those few years. So it's kind of key strategic decision um, but kind of paid off uh, sort of really well. So I think starting out, uh, the best advice I got given was, was really about tenacity. Um, if you think about when you start pitching to investors or even start trying to hire the first people, you'll hear a lot of no's. And I think that, you know, one of the key things is, is around understanding um, that, that really you have to have a lot of belief in, in your own idea, particularly around your own technology, and really being able to handle a lot of that, um, you know, handle a lot of those uh, no's that get given to you. Um, Beyond that, once you've kind of kind of got beyond that, you've got some traction. Um, one of the things that the really best advice is really about hiring great leaders. What you ideally want to be able to do is be an expert in the technology and, and, and really hire people who have done the business building piece before. Um, and by hi hiring those fantastic leaders, you can really build a, a great organization. So my own background was more in biology and, and also biotechnology, interested in informatics. And a lot of that background is kind of more on technical level. I think that being a technical sort of expert in your field is obviously essential for creating a technology company. So what you really want to immerse yourself in is, is, is the kind of startup culture. I, I really jumped into podcasts or trying to understand uh, everything that was happening around that. This allowed me to have the language to speak to investors or to kind of learn a, a whole lot about business. So just kind of immersing yourself in that, whether that's through reading um, or, or learning uh, from online materials and the like, attending events and, and such. That really kind of has, was a big sort of step up in my own, in my own journey. So the first thing I've, I've really learned from that is really around the importance of, of building a product that people want. If you build a product that people want, it can, it can mask a lot of the say, other deficiencies that you may have. It's, it's this kind of saying that, that startups succeed in spite of their, their weaknesses. And by building a product people want, really reaching that, that product market fit, it'll kind of drag you through a lot of the, uh, the difficulties that you have, and particularly you know, as, a, as a startup, things you may not be uh, experienced in itself. 
I'd say the number two thing is, is learning how to sell. Um, we're always selling, whether that's selling to customers or selling to potential employees, selling to investors. So kind of learning those skills and understanding that will also get you a long way. I think the final thing uh, is really about how important relationships are. I, I was really guess, surprised coming from a kind of science where you think it's relatively open and the like. The relationships you've been able to build and um, through building the startup, whether it's with regards to investors, uh, with your management team, with, with employees, um, with kind of customers as well, being so critical to our, to our success. So kind of thinking about those relationships and, and uh, you'll be surprised uh, how far they can get you as well. So I really think it's important to enjoy the journey. Um, it's not necessarily about a destination. People think when you start a, create a, start, a startup that it's about some kind of some kind of outcome. But really enjoying the journey is, is, is a key thing. I think for us, it's, uh, it's very hard to predict exactly how that journey is going to be, um, what the outcome is going to be to that. And for us, it still, still, still feels relatively early uh, with regards to that. But if you're able to enjoy that experience, really learn a lot along the way, I think as a, as a startup founder in particular, you're exposed to so many different aspects, whether that's you're running sales yourself or you're setting up marketing or um, you're setting up HR, things that you would never even have thought that you would be, you'd be doing. If you can enjoy that kind of journey and, and kind of take it uh, as a way to learn and to really grow personally, I think it's kind of the, the best way to, to do it and something uh, you know, definitely see as very valuable. So it's just the beginning for Sakara Labs. If we think about what we're trying to achieve in terms of bringing large-scale multi-omic analysis to every scientist, I feel there's a lot of improvements um, that we still want to make, particularly with regards to accessibility, really en enabling that infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, cluster infrastructure for all those, all those scientists everywhere in the world. Also thinking about the product roadmap in terms of how we can stretch out beyond the large-scale analysis and thinking about things that are going on with regards to interactive analysis, uh, reporting, uh, data management, etc. And then thinking about the customers uh, that we want to serve. Some of our customers are doing really fantastic things, you know, 23andMe, Oxford Nanopore, AstraZeneca, really helping them achieve their goals and, and really taking them to the next level and improving things for, for life sciences generally.